So my talk is on the as part of the nanotechnology uh, series, and it's on the future of health. Can the science of the small provide a solution to South Africa's national health crisis? Okay, and interesting to know, if you didn't know, that the leading cause of death in the country is actually tuberculosis. So here's a chart of the world highlighting the new cases of TB reported. So it's per 100,000 people per country. And you actually see a very small number of cases reported in North America, in Europe, more developed countries. It increases in South America. But the problem lies mainly in Russia and also in Asian countries. And then you can see in South Africa, it says greater than 300. We're one of those countries sitting with the highest rate of TB. So what is this disease? Well, first of all, tuberculosis is an airborne contagious disease. Um, so that says right now, anyone in this room is susceptible to getting TB. It does not, it is, knows no race, it knows no color, it knows no age or gender, but why is it then a disease of poverty? Well, most people have dormant TB, and basically the TB bacteria resides in your body, and it's only when your immune system is compromised in some way, so it becomes weak, that the TB bacteria now thrives on this condition, and that's how you actually get um, more serious TB. So what are the challenges facing South Africa? As I mentioned, it's the leading cause of death in South Africa. And one of the biggest reasons is because of its co-infection with HIV AIDS. So as you know, the immune system is compromised when you have HIV and AIDS. And this is why the TB um, bacteria is enjoying HIV patients. They can thrive in those conditions. 70% of TB patients actually have HIV. Patient non-compliance is another problem. The other problem is taking those tablets for six to nine months is a huge problem. So the dose and the dosing frequency, um, the length of the treatment, the poor bioavailability. So that means you've got to take a lot of drugs in order for it to cure the problem because not all of it reaches your lungs. And then there's many side effects and this is like some of the drugs can be toxic to the body. So you pa the patient might feel ill. There's even reported cases of hearing loss and things like that. Okay, and then uh, another problem is the emergence of drug-resistant TB, and this is MDR and XDR TB. It only has a 53% cure rate. And what is MDR TB? It's multi-drug-resistant TB. So basically, it's resistance to the first-line drugs. So when the patient becomes resistant to these drugs because they didn't comply with the medication or something, then they're now forced to take a new set of drugs. And this is a much longer treatment. And then it gets even worse because then you skip that treatment and you end up getting extensively drug-resistant TB. Um, and this is actually resistant to now the second-line drugs. And the treatment here is even longer, up to two years. So what is the problem? Do we have a treatment for TB? Yes, we currently do have a treatment. It's a very uh, effective therapeutic regime that's available. It's known as the directly observed treatment short course program. In other words, patients are expected to go to a medical center if you have TB, and a medical staff will watch you and monitor you, take those tablets, and obviously do some medical exams for you as well. And the idea is to make sure that you do take the drugs. So this brings me to the point of my talk and the work that we do. Way back in 2005, um, when nanotechnology was the buzz, a researcher, Dr. Hulda Swai, she's now actually our research group leader, she asked the question, can we take nanomedicine and combine it with tuberculosis to find a better treatment? And the answer was yes. And what she proposed is, what if we designed an anti-TB nano-based drug delivery system? So what is nanomedicine? Well, it's actually the integration of nanotechnology with medicine. And on a more scientific definition, it is the science and technology of diagnosing, treating, and preventing disease and traumatic injury, of relieving pain, and of preserving and improving human health using molecular tools and molecular knowledge of the human body. So nanotechnology holds great potential for several applications in the medical field, owing to its ability to manipulate the physical, the chemical, and the biological properties of a particle. Okay, and just to show you some of the applications for research and clinical activities, 
there's drug screening, gene delivery, there's nanomedicine being carried out for diagnosis and diagnostics and monitoring for detection and for drug delivery. And then there's also tissue engineering, which is a newer field. In nanomedicine, we focus on different particles, but we'll look at polymeric drug delivery systems. So what are these? Um, first of all, polymeric drug delivery systems. It's a polymer particle consisting of reservoir devices, and the active is actually encapsulated within the polymer shell. And we also look at matrix devices in which the active is physically entrapped within the polymer network. You also get dendrimers, you get polymer micelles, and you also get polymer um, drug conjugates. The interesting thing about it, different activities within drug delivery require different sizes. So you can see nicely exactly what you would like to use for the purpose of um, the drug delivery system. And so we focus on nanospheres because we want a science range of about 500 nanometers. Okay, so if we look at polymeric nanoparticles, what is a polymeric nanoparticle? It's defined as a particulate dispersion or a solid particle with a size ranging from one to a thousand nanometers. And you get two types, as I mentioned. You get the nanosphere, and we saw the matrix type. And here, your active or your drug, it can actually be absorbed on the surface or within the particle, or it can be dissolved in, inside the particle. You also get a nanocapsule, and this is the nanocapsule version. It's a multifunctional nanoparticle. It has a shell and it has a core. So the nice thing about it, so here's the core. You can put the active inside the core. You can absorb it on the surface. So you can have some drugs that might be happier sitting in there. Some drugs could be happy on the surface. But the other nice thing I'm going to show you is that you can add other things. So you have some things called ligands, and they can be attached to this nanoparticle, and they're specific to a, a specific cell in your body. So they will rather be attracted to that particular cell. So that's the nice thing, and that's where targeting comes in. Okay. So what is the promise of nanotechnology in drug delivery? First of all, it's here to enhance drug prop uh, properties. That includes solubility, because many, uh, many drugs are not soluble within the body. Then also to improve the rate of dissolution of the drug through the body. And then oral bioavailability. Bio so what is oral bioavailability? Basically, bioavailability refers to how fast the drug enters the systemic system. So basically, how fast does it go through the blood system? That's the rate of absorption. And how much of that nominal strength enters the body? So what is the extent of absorption? Again, okay, also mentioned targeting abilities because now you can actually target the site of the infection. So when you take medication, sometimes it doesn't actually go all the way. Some of the drug is lost as it gets to that particular part of the body. Whereas here we can target it and so it goes specifically to the lungs for like the TB infection. We want to enhance dosing requirements. Sometimes you have to take a, a number of um, uh, tablets in order to cure yourself of, of a specific illness. And now we can improve the dosing frequency. We can minimize side effects. Um, we can have more convenient dosage forms and we can have shortened treatment times. And basically what I'm saying about dose frequency and the shortened treatment time is that a particle within a polymer matrix, so it can basically enter your body and that polymer matrix can degrade over time and slowly release the drug. So instead of the drug being um, taken out of the body within a day, it can now even stay in the body for up to a week. And then also generic technologies, because you know generic medication, it would be cheaper. So if we can find a good technology using nanotechnology, we can maybe transfer this on to other um, infectious diseases or other diseases in general. So the main input of nanotechnology on nanomedicine is to miniaturize and multifunctionalize drug carriers for improved dr uh, delivery in a time and disease specific manner. So that's where controlled release comes in because now, like I said, instead of taking the medication once a day, because the polymer can degrade slowly over time, you can maybe take it once in three days, once in 10 days. And I also mentioned it's disease specific, so you can target it to a specific organ. Because what we want is more efficient drugs and we want a more efficient drug delivery system that can address patient non-compliance, can minimize toxicity, can improve bioavailability, can reduce the emergence of drug resistance, and can reduce the, the treatment time. Mm -hmm.